Hi everybody, it's Gene Simmons, and you're not. This is uh, Kiss My Collectibles Podcast. Did you know that? Hello, everyone, and welcome to the next episode of Kiss My Collectibles. I am one of your co-hosts, Jason Herndon, and with me, as always, is... Nicholas Buckland, and with me since the dawn of time is... Joe Lalich. I don't know what that means, but I'll take it. (laughs) (laughs) We've been inextricably linked throughout the cosmos. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Through all our lives. Yes, and joining us is a special guest this time for his fourth appearance on this silly little podcast that makes him our <laughs> most frequent guest i think so so far is mr john humphrey say hello to john thank you world if, renowned if you don't rock know, drummer round of applause yeah. Yeah. yeah if you don't know john is a drummer for seether and the nixons and he's done lots of stuff toured with kiss back on the reunion tour uh he's done yeah. lots and lots of cool stuff so um uh, John's a good friend of the show and a good friend of ours, and thank you for joining us this week. Yeah, thanks for having me again. Yeah. Good to be back. Good to be back. <laughs> so, uh, this week on the show, we are going to do, I guess we're going to call it the top five essential items for the beginning Kiss Collector that you can buy for $100 Snappy or less. Title. Yes, it should, should fit. Should look good in Joe's thumbnail. It's like it's, it's just going to be one of those scrollers, like on a news channel, right? It's going to be that it's just going to have to go by on the Chiron. Yeah. So yeah, we we thought we would uh kind of speak to the newer collector a little bit, and maybe the budget conscious collector, and maybe talk yeah. about some of those items because we always talk about very expensive vintage items on this show and you can see behind john humphrey you know if it's not cut out he's got a lot of very cool expensive pieces behind him but uh, there are still some really cool pieces that you can get for a hundred dollars or less and so we're going to kind of i guess structure it like we did all of our other essential episodes we're going to have our own lists of items and then we're going to kind of come together at the end and try to make some kind of essential quote-unquote list for the for the beginner. Yeah, there was a viewer question, yeah. I think, um, if the episode hasn't aired already, it, it will shortly, about, um, the low, you know, I don't have a big budget, I'm a college student, what would you recommend I get as far as vinyl goes, or where would I start my collection? And it sort of triggered the thought of, okay, if somebody had, let's say, the budget of 500 bucks, and they came to us and said, hey, we want, I want to buy five cool KISS collectibles for 500 bucks, so around 100 bucks a piece, which... Which most vintage stuff, that's kind of like the low water mark for most things, unless you know, unless it's in terrible condition or whatever, right? You know, but but generally speaking, so that was a sort of the the thought behind the show this week was to kind of do a be- beginner's guide. Yeah, Joe's idea. So if you don't like it, send all the hate mail to him. Yeah, just send all. <laughs> just send me all the hate mail always. I love it. <laughs> Poor Joe. He'll respond with kindness. What do you mean you don't agree with me? Do you know who you're dealing with? (laughs) (laughs) But uh, before we get into all of that, as always, let's, uh, you want to introduce George there, Nicholas? Yeah, so George's um, usual piece now is New Confessions, and he's he's come to us with the very latest and the greatest of something new that's come out in the Kiss world, um, just from around the world. Here it is. Hello, Kiss fans and collectors. My name is George Avrall. I'm going to be doing another review on some of the new KISS collectibles KISS is releasing in the near future for you guys. Um, let's start off with the first one. The first one, KISS is very well known for releasing um, partnerships with clothing lines. Um, the last one I think was the big one was with John Varvatos releasing a limited run of KISS shirts. 
um, did I think fairly okay. I didn't, I didn't see many people buying them, but they were out there. Um, Kiss is now partnered up with a new fashion designer called Philip Klein. Never heard of him really much, but I've heard his reputation is kind of like a rock star kind of feel to his style. Um, but Kiss and him kind of joined up and they released a, a line of men's and women's clothes that are very, very unique. Um, very stylish and very, some of it's cool. But a lot of it is very um, questionable in little ways, but not me to decide. Uh, there, he's releasing sweaters, jackets, shirts, dresses, skirts, um, just a, a vast array of different kind of clothes. But the thing about these items are is the price range. You thought the John Varvato stuff was very expensive. This is kind of going to a new level of pricing. Um, the least, uh, I checked the price points on these. Um, starting prices for some of these items start off around $630 going up to almost $8,000 no kidding um, I don't know if that's gonna fit very well a lot of the KISS fans when it comes to buying your new KISS shirt but um, yeah those prices are kind of crazy but there's always a market for everyone KISS has a market for everyone doesn't matter who they are someone's gonna buy them but not me anytime soon <laughs> unless they go into clearance even in the clearance section I don't think I could afford them Anyways, going to another uh, Kiss and clothing line. Kiss is also, in our second review, is Kiss partnering up with Marvel. As you know, Kiss and Marvel has a history back going all the way back to 1978 with Kiss coming out with the Kiss comic books. And they kind of came out a little resurgence in the, uh, around the reunion era, kind of died down again. And then now they came back and they're back together again. Um, this time they're going to be releasing a vast array of merchandise. It could be home goods, it could be uh, posters, um, drinkware sets, and the big popular one that's out right now I'm seeing out in the market is shirts. I'm wearing one right now. Here's a cool Sound Boom Marvel shirt right now. Um, there's a, quite a few Marvel shirts that there. It's out right now. I haven't seen a few pop up on Amazon, um, Walmart, Target. I'm seeing them. I think the main site that I've been seeing a lot of them pop up is Piff Sun. Um, they're uh, they're the ones that I first saw these shirts come out. But they're gonna, I think these are going to be pretty mass produced around a lot of different areas. Since Disney and Disney and Marvel are kind of close and Disney usually kind of spreads out a lot of markets. So I think the Marvel products are going to be very accessible around the world when it comes to uh, coming out with some new uh, related stuff in the future. Um, but yeah, this is a very cool shirt so with the Marvel design and Kiss joined together. Uh, some of the designs are very, very cool. With the Dynasty one it came out with and the comic book style ones. It's good. I think it's going to do very, very well once it, it, they all start hitting the markets in, uh, in the future. Last but not least, um, getting off the clothing line, uh, we're going to do puzzles. You know, Kiss is, has a vast array of puzzles. Lines going from the 70s and a, a big resurgence in the, when Kiss got back together. Um, now Kiss is releasing uh, a new Jigsaw puzzle um, by Rocksaw Puzzles. Um, Rockstar Puzzles has a vast array of different bands, puzzles from Maiden, uh, Alice Cooper, Scorpions. I've seen uh, a lot of different bands they've been doing and now KISS has joined their uh, list of uh, uh, brands of puzzles they're going to be doing. Uh, it's a 500 piece jigsaw puzzle. Um, the only thing that I think that's really really cool about this one is the, uh, the albums that they're using this time. Um, they're doing the average one destroyer rock and over which we've seen pretty much love gun We had one puzzle with love gun one before which was very nice, but they added dynasty this time So that's a very very cool one to see uh, that hasn't been really heavily merchandised So uh, that's very very cool to see and those are being sold in the UK at the moment But I'm seeing a little resurgence of stuff um, being sold in the US So I'll give it a little time once they come out see where the markets are coming because I just uh ordered one also too but it's from the UK but I saw one recently of a destroyer one being sold in the US so uh, I'll give it some time while I'm searching to see where you want to get them there's a, uh, also too those you can reach in vast variety of websites because I'm seeing them pop up in different websites so this Google uh, kids jigsaw puzzles with dynasty or destroyer and they pretty much pop up right away um, that's pretty much it uh, those are the newest kids items that are coming out recently um, I think they're very, very cool. Marvel ones, I think, would be pretty cool. The puzzles, can't wait to get my hands on those. So, uh, like I said, stay safe out there. Keep kids collecting, and um, see you guys for another video.
Ha ha ha! Thank you, George. That was fantastic. <laughs> that was my fake laugh because I, I haven't watched what he sent. So, Amazing. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. It was great work, George. Oh. Yeah, I'm sure it was fantastic. Um, we see it later. <laughs> <laughs> the wonderful world of editing. Exactly. Wouldn't that be horrible yeah. if George yeah. came on? We got to edit this part out. But if he came on and said, "This pandemic is killing me. I've had to sell all my kiss stuff, and this is my last <laughs> remaining thing." And you cut to Nicholas, and he's like, ha, ha, ha. "Thank you, George." For... <laughs> or, or we replace him. Like, Good one. And it comes out Frank. Uh, so just like a quick voice. <laughs> Insert name here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, okay, so yeah, okay. George Navarro. Oh. Thanks for that. Mm. Yeah, thanks, George. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I loved him in the Chili Peppers. <laughs> that was good. Dave's brother. Yeah. As, as Dave's younger brother. <laughs> his his yeah. less successful brother. George, and on the show this week, George Navarro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Let's, should we move on to what's in the box? Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to open it. Oh, what's in the box? What's in the fucking box? What's in the box? Who's going first? (laughs) What is it? Yeah. Who's going Uh, first? I have the least. You want me to go first? Least is first. All right. I guess I I have one thing, so I assume it's the least. So, um, so we talked about this. I'm getting all the episodes mixed up now. So I think I don't know. It might have been an ep- it was whatever episode it was, or maybe it even hadn't even aired yet. Where I was showing the um, my love gun press kit that I got that was mm-hmm. very incomplete, yep. and Nicholas was showing what all was in his, and one of the things that was in his was a particular poster of all of these uh, publications that the band is on. So I went ahead and bought one of these. But the thing is, Nicholas, we may have to mm. discuss this, is when I was discussing this with Shane McManus over in the poster, mm. uh, they kind of had a big discussion a couple of years ago about which one of those posters belongs in those press kits. And mm. this particular poster that you showed from your love gun, they say belongs in Destroyer. Because there's a whole different poster that belongs in Love Gun, but anyway, it'll be something that we'll have well, to. Well, it's, it's it's one of those things like like right. Bill Coin said, they just jammed in whatever they had. So they Correct. the right. earlier Love Gun kits because it had that, the later ones could have had that, or it could have been Frankenstein later. We don't really know. Very, that's mm. very very correct. So anyway, mm. I went ahead and bought this this poster from Shane. It's in really mm. nice shape and got a smoking deal on it. So I will, since I don't have the Destroyer press kit, I will put this in my Love Gun press kit for now. So that's where mm-hmm. it will be at home. But that's all I got this week. Yeah, you know it's really just going to be on your floor, really. On a pile Actually, of boxes. It's probably going to sit right there where I just... Actually, <laughs> 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 what did I yeah, do? Later on, blow the dust off it. Yeah. <laughs> Like been stepped on, and what does this go to? <laughs> exactly. Hey, look, I'm I'm gonna put it in there right now. Nice. Of course, the nice. of course the love gun press kit will be on the floor, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just throw it over. My favorite thing. I, I haven't had a chance to watch the entire episode you guys just released of the uh, the ones you did you did with John of the the Kiss Army kits, which I love, but the press kits as well, man. I just they're like some of my favorite items. Well. Mm. Stay tuned. Mm. That's yeah. all I can say. Uh, Stay tuned. Yeah, yeah cool stuff coming. <laughs> nice. So, do you That's do you fun. collect any of the Army uh, Kiss Army fan club kits, John, or any of the press kits? Are you into any of yes, that stuff? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, 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 big time. Cool. Are you a vi- are you a vintage only guy, or do you buy anything new at all? Uh, on occasion. Um, you know, it's completely random, but the uh, the Alive 2 knuckle bone statues that came out a few yeah. years back, like, I'll pick those up. Or, the, you know, obviously, the, the newer tour books and things I'll still collect. But that's just about it, really, I think, as yeah. far as the newer stuff. It depends. Yeah. It depends, really. I have the new Mego, you know, the, the, the Target edition of the Mego character, you know, right. that they released. Mm-hmm. I have those. You know, so it just it just really depends. 
Yeah, I'm the that's the, I'm the same way too. I don't go out and buy all of the '96 <clears throat> up stuff. I, I, I'm not that kind of guy. But if it speaks to me in some yeah. sort of way, if I really think it's a cool piece, like in fact, uh, one of my pieces in in my list is a newer item that harkens back to vintage. So you know, we'll talk about it when we get there. But I I pick those up. So I but I don't buy everything that comes out. I, I, sh- I just don't. Right. Other than other than I don't vinyl. either. Other than vinyl. Yeah. Yeah. Big into vinyl. Um, I was speaking with Joe before. And vinyl's just like the center of my collection of all my music. Not only Kiss, but other artists as well. I mean, music is like sort of that, every, the foundation which everything else is built off of, you know. With Kiss, obviously, it's memorabilia and it's heavy in the vintage. But I do get the occasional new thing. But for the most part, I get vinyl. All the vinyl that comes out, right. the newer stuff, the colored vinyl stuff, I try to pick up all of that right very cool who's next nicholas what's in the box yeah what was in the box this actually wouldn't fit in any box and this is a huge box but i picked this up from a um a second hand kind of record store and <clears throat> i don't know if you can see this here it's pre-framed but it's um oh wow yeah it's this nice. attack of the phantom awesome. um, poster which was cool um comes with a Australian certificate. Now, these certificates don't mean anything, but you know, certificate of, of authenticity. Authenticity because it says it's Attack of the Phantoms' 1978 debut poster, which we know it came from um, 1980. But I'm, I'm, I need to, I need to check with people. But it says released by Filmways. I'm not 100 percent certain if that's actually even the British poster or not, because I've got a feeling I've seen Filmways on my uh, British sticker. So. Whatever this is, this is the version with uh, the version of the movie with um, Sean O something and I was made for oh, loving you yeah. that they, they throw in the there as well. Cool. Yeah, yeah. the video thing, which, which I reckon that would have been really cool to see on a big screen actually. Sure. It would have been really nice yeah. to have those two videos in there. So yes, yeah, so I'm really pleased with that. Pre framed so I didn't have to spend another two hundred dollars to um, to get it framed up. So yeah, that, that's my what's in the box for this week. Mm. I um I often often worry about those things um i've always wanted to get those posters and lobby cards and and all of that kind of stuff for attack of the phantoms for over in europe and and all of that stuff um <clears throat> and john five is showing a lot of it now on his knights and satan service instagram uh but i i feel i fear that a lot of that stuff has been counterfeited is is that correct i mean had those posters oh, I think been easier to do you know but I, I haven't seen any fakes of these, but they could very well be. I, okay. I, I looked up, I've, I've got a little old printer's loop where I can go in and see the color separation and the dot kind of thing. So this one's oh. been printed that way, which is very different to the way. I, it, it kind of it goes weird if you if you scan it and then put it back in. The dots don't work the same way. It just mm-hmm. goes into like blobs of color. So that's that's the way I can always tell usually if it's been printed printed that way because i from back in the old magazine days you'd always look through use those anyway awesome mm. so that's a good 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 to know joe i'm gonna go next joe? all right i uh picked up a my 494th copy of creatures of the night um this is mm-hmm. the uh turkish counterfeit edition that oh, came yeah. out from from dallas so this one's actually jason you and i talked a little bit about this off air i think about you know, there's a couple of counterfeit records that, even though they are cu- counterfeit and we know that they're fake, um, that they still garner a lot of attention and, you know, have a lot of collectability around them. Um, yeah. And this is one of them, so you can see it has the censored logo there. Um, it's got, a, it's hard to tell down here in the in the corner, there's the Dallas logo, which is like a cowboy mm. hat sort of a we'll, thing. We'll put that up on screen now. Yep. So, yep. And a lot Let's of the see. copy is missing from the uh, from the back of this record compared to you know, the U.S. Creatures. I think the U.S. Creatures talks about the cassette, you know, it being available on cassette. And I think there was still a Kiss Army thing that you could, you know, that was on the back there and some other things. But that's all stripped off here. Um, so it just says uh, 1982 phonogram. Uh, but, but yeah, it's on, the, it's on the Dallas label. Let me show you the actual label itself here on the record. Uh, I don't know if you can see that or not. There you, there you go. go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it looks good. So it's got no, so it's got nothing to do with Dallas. That's just the name of the Turkish label. Is that what you mean? Right. It's yeah. got nothing to do with Dallas, the city. Right. right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Exactly. 
So yeah, one of the one of the rare. I think there's a couple of uh, maybe a couple of Taiwanese releases. Another Turkic, the Turkish Elder release that's that's yeah. sort of um, sought after. Um, but yeah, it's one of those weird weird counterfeit <laughs> items that still retains its value and that people yeah. are looking for. And just to touch, you know, kind of elaborate on what you and I were talking about, and, and I'm sure we've talked about it on the show many times in the past over the last four years, but, um, you know, when Joe says counterfeit, we're, we're talking about, you know, a label or a company of some sort pressed those records up during that time when the, when the record was out or had just came out or something like that. And it's th- th- those items come from countries that don't, recognize intellectual copyrights so most of your communist nations and you know things like that so russia and you know sometimes south korea some southeast asian countries alabama alabama (laughs) so but uh but you know they they just they came out like that it's not like a modern day counterfeit where you you know somebody's in their basement or somebody has access to a high-res scanner and printer and they're making vinnie vincent creatures of the night sure Saying there's yeah, only a yeah. hundred of them and selling thousands of them for five hundred and thousand dollars a piece, not mm. those kinds of counterfeits. Those counterfeits have zero value. Right. These things were what was offered to the people in the stores at in the, Turkey at the time. At the yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. So yes. um, right. they're almost make... like almost like illegally produced, aren't they? Because they they were, you know, they were legal they were legally purchased. But they're they were really just, yeah. Pirate sure. is yeah. the other name. Captain Fear the Sword, he loves to dance. He will show you how. Captain Fear the Sword, he loves to dance. I will show you now. Those, yeah. th- those are pirate. pirate. Right. Yeah, yeah. Those, those are pirate. Right. Pirate. So, um, and you saw, like, you see a lot of Southeast Asian cassettes are like that. You see a lot of Southeast <laughs> Asian cassettes and uh, that are just yeah. random, bizarre things. So, but. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I just wanted to distinguish what we're talking about here. We're talking about vintage. Yeah, it's one kind of those of, weird, blurry lines right, because of the, a, because of the, yeah, how long ago it, you know all that stuff came out and everything. Right. So right. Yeah. So and some of those, especially when they have different covers, like the Turkish Elder. Um, yeah. When, when they have different covers, they 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 become quite sought after. They're they don't press very many of them in the first place mm. because you know they're just short runs and those are smaller countries. Um, mm. And as I said, it just comes down to the cover, I reckon. So sure. the one that replicates the exact cover, it's not as valuable. The one that has a totally right. interesting, different cover, people will probably collect more. They'll probably go, I can't be bothered to get 10 or 15 different of these bootlegs, but I'll get the Turkish one because it looks, you know, it's got a, the picture of the band on Correct. it, which is very different yeah. to, to yeah. The, the, the door and stuff. Although having yeah. said that, that one's pretty tough to find. You know, it's the creature's is that, Turkish yeah. version is tough to find, yeah. and it's highly yeah. sought after. So I was, yeah, I was uh, glad to add it mm. in to the collection. Yeah, and this stuff bleeds over into merchandise, too, because we talk about, like, the early campus craft things that are technically not yeah. official. Yep. You know, mm. um, some of the those mirrors uh, in the yeah. mid-'70s. You know, we've talked about it a bunch of times. Those things are still highly sought after by collectors because they're of mm. the time period. Yeah, they're vintage. And, uh, yeah, they're vintage. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. all the, yeah, Mexi- they- the Mexican belt buckles as well. Yes, None yes. Are, yeah, are technically yeah. official, aren't they? You know? Right. So, John, what do you got? I have some vinyl, and uh, uh, three arrived this week. And the first one being this is a creatures from Australia. But what's cool? It has the the bonus sticker. Oh, that's Excellent. great. Uh, the point of purchase sticker that came with it so i was kind of happy to get that and so there's the label there very mm-hmm. similar to the u.s version mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but i was happy to get that with the sticker yeah that sticker that that stickers any of that point of purchase stuff from back in those days is tough and really adds yeah to the value yeah i love the cool. japanese stuff i have a, yeah. a lot of the items that came with those but that that mm-hmm. one was it took a while a few years to put together so I was mm. kind of happy to get that one. Yeah. And then, uh, did that come with the? Being, sorry, I was just going to interrupt. You know, did that come with the poster? Do Do we know? Did the? Because I've seen an Australian poster, almost the same as the right. sticker. But do we know? Did right. that come out at point of purchase, or is that just an in-store promo, or, or we don't know? Like what was what I, was I'm that not Aussie too poster? Sure. I thought it, it it was perhaps just the in-store promo, but it, that's what I, I have it seen. <clears throat> yeah, I you know I have seen copies. It's been several years now, now that have mm. those. Well, maybe yeah. with the vinyl, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, I don't know either. I'm not sure. We'll ask Shane, see what he says. Somebody will tell yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah. 
Absolutely. And sticking with Australia, I have Best of the Solos finally no, here with the sticker. That's great. And then, that's great. Yeah. Are, you, are you just now getting the that sticker one? On front. Whoops. Huh? Are you just now getting that Best of Solos from Australia? Okay, so this is how <laughs> picky I am. I have a copy, but it didn't have the red hype sticker, the price right. sticker on front. Yeah, so, yeah. of course, mm-hmm. I had to get it. So I could have the inserts and then the hype sticker on front. I completed to the had to get that. And then finally, uh, Kiss of Life 3 from Brazil. Oh, wow. And it's just a single LP. It's not a double LP like in the U.S. And um, I put it on my turntable, and of course it sounds atrocious, but I just love these things, man. I just love these variances, and the label's different, obviously. Same track listing, or did, did they leave any out? Or did they hot and shade it and just cram them all on there? Off, take It Off is on there as well. All the tracks on, and Take It Off is on a single disc? It is on a single disc. <laughs> wow. It's a lot of tracks on, pressed onto one it sounds, slab sounds of like the, Sounds like the Napstar days of listening <laughs> to things like through, through a fax line or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> MP3 56k. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. That was painful era. That one. Like, like Long line. Line. God, five yeah. minutes on one side. Yeah. Those are great. Those are great. So, John, when you're collecting vinyl, yeah. so how do you go about picking out those records? Are those things that you just stumble across, or do you have sort of a, a strategy on what types of things you're collecting? So, how do those three make it into your collection? Well, um, I like a lot of the South American releases, just um, obviously grabbing them here. You know, it's we love these, right? Oh, like right. Me. oh God. Right? <laughs> you know, this took, that took, a, you know, three years to find. Just, you know, those variances, man, I, I love. I'm, you know, I don't have every pressing from every country. Maybe I have, like, all first or promo Japanese pressings up through creatures. I have all U S first pressings, but it's just certain ones. Like I love the originals. So I have all three, you know, variances with the three different labels from Canada, original, you know, the South American stuff alive too. I learned a lot, obviously from the Bibles uh, and being able to look through those and, and find out, you know, like the Brazilian copy of Alive three. I didn't even know that it was existed that it was different, you know, and, and I had to research it. Somebody else had posted it, and I'm like, oh, that's mm-hmm. cool. So put it in, into my Discogs want list, and there you go. Pops up, popped on it, you know. Nice. That's so great. for the audience- I've been able to, I've been fortunate enough to find some great stuff around the world on tour as well. Sure. That's what I really miss most of all about being home this year, and um, is, uh, you know, that's what I do on days off. I'm, I'm hunting record stores. I have uh, mm-hmm. an app on my phone. That tells me, um, you know, record stores within a certain mile radius of a given area that I'm at. And uh, I go out and hunting for vinyl on days off. I love it. That's awesome. Yeah, very cool. cool. So for the audio guys, uh, because we all kind of went, oh, when John held those up, that was uh, Kiss Alive Volume 3 and Volume 4 for, you know, with with the covers. If you just listen to this, I guess it's hard to describe. Where are those from? Those are from. where are they from, John? Are they from Peru or? I don't remember. No, it's it. Um, oh, good Lord, Chile, Chile, Chile. That's where. Yeah. From. That's right. They're, so, vo- alive, alive, two, volume three and volume four. Right. It's the same cover as Kiss Alive right. Two, except where it has the two Roman numerals, it has a three, and then has a four. Those right. are stupid hard to find, and not an stupid. easy one to search yeah, for on Discogs or eBay either, because you put in Kiss right. Alive Three. And you get, you know, mm. all the U.S. versions mm. of Kiss Alive yeah. 3. Right. And what's great is they divided up. They obviously split Alive into part one and two. So when they got to Alive 2, those became three and four. But funny enough, you know what the last one that I added to that set of four? Do you know which one? you have a guess which one was the last one I added of the four parts? Was no. The first, the first one? It yeah. was crazy. The first one, which is just looks, you know, it's it's actually part two or or the second LP. You know how those are kind of screwed up, but it looks just like the cover of the regular Alive. It's just not nothing really different. Uh, it's just a single LP, right? But I managed to find part 
two first, three and four, and then found five. It took forever to find the first one. Wow, interesting. Bizarre. And yeah. expensive. Yeah, you know, it's like we talk about the rarity of these things, but, you know, how many how many of those records exist on the planet? You know, it's just they're just so hard to find and they take years to find. And I mean, yeah. they're just they're you know, or how many of the Turkish creatures of the night, even the, you know, the pirated or bootleg, whatever you want to call it. How many of those exist on the planet? How many of those, you know, survived 40 years and you know, right. and all the things that society has gone through since then, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. Good stuff, John. Thanks, man. We should have you on to talk about vinyl sometime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> so, John, have you, in your uh, time collecting since the last time you were on the show, have you gotten any new or cool items that you wanted to show us and to the people? Yeah, absolutely. I've got a few gems here. Gems to me, anyway. But I think, Joe, maybe being a graphic artist, you'll get a kick out of this. So, what I have here is the original graphic art for the oh. double platinum insert. Oh, that's no, awesome. see that? Kidding. Very wow. cool. Oh my so it's goodness. like notes and different things about specific to the color, the logo, mm -hmm. sort of all in this almost like transparent tracing yeah. paper. Oh, my gosh. Key mm -hmm. lining, right, Nicholas? You and I did plenty yeah, of that. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It did that at college anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That yeah. Kind of right. Thing. Right. Mm. So I need to get this framed. But it came yeah. with a lot. That's amazing. Where it was that graphic. And then obviously everybody you know knows the actual finished insert and what yeah. it looked like. Right. And then the uh, double platinum ad, the billboard ad, this is just um, just it by itself. There's, the, there's no wording or. John, just hold that to the center that stuff. Just hold yeah. that right into the yeah. center of the yeah, screen. Cover your face. It won't, yeah. cropped, cover your face. Off. Cover your face. Yep. Yeah. You see it? Cool. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Very cool. Cool. Wow. Yeah. So that's another Make piece of mock-up. So it's sort of like the key art for that for that ad. Straight ad, yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. Like so John, that, it, then, are, do you want to share where you where you found those or who you uh, how did you come across those or is that not something you want to talk about? Oh no no that's fine. I just uh, another collector uh, yeah. that that was selling some stuff, you know, and and just and had that and uh, different stuff from Howard Marks and their offices and and had that lots of the the platinum stuff. And I just really oh, that's amazing. It's like what Nicholas said. Double platinum wasn't my first album, but it definitely holds a special place in my heart. It was one of my early one of my first group of Kiss albums. So mm -hmm. to actually know that I have the you know the original art, the graphic art for that insert, I think you know is is pretty cool. Unreal. Especially, you know, mm -hmm. it, you know? Yeah, a literal <laughs> one of a kind piece. So now, if you're going to get that framed. Are you gonna Are you gonna take the tape off the top and put them side by side, or will you put it right over the top? How will you do that? I think I'll put it right over the top. I'll, yeah. I'll kind of leave it as is, and yeah. maybe display it with the actual finished, you know, yeah. insert the platinum insert mm -hmm. next to it, or something like that. I'm not too sure, but um, but I think I'll leave it as is. Is that the size? It, is that a hundred percent size, or is the is the actual certificate the same size as the art? Yeah, yeah, that's hundred percent size. That's yep. the actual size. It's... Gosh, that I love seeing that stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm. yeah. John, if you don't yeah. mind, can you can you take photos of that and send it to us? Absolutely. So I'll, we can, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I love yeah, seeing stuff sure. like that. What an amazing. Yeah, piece, I, I man. love that kind of stuff. I mean, yeah. most of that stuff would have ended up in the bin after the yeah. after the job was complete. So, especially from right. an advertising agency too, like you know. Oh, forget it. Not like yeah. it was. The case office, just you, you just wrong, couldn't yeah. physically keep all those boards. No. You know, it probably would right. go into rot into some sort of, you know, uh, file, and they might rotate them mm -hmm. out over time. You know, right? Yeah, very right. cool. That's you awesome. know, and, and I'm sure a lot of that did end up in trash. You know, I don't yeah. know that everything was saved. Hopefully, it was, and uh, mm -hmm. maybe it's found its way into other private collections. But yeah, I hate to think any mm -hmm. of that kind of stuff being thrown out. You know, yeah. Yeah. So what else? Anything that, else? And then, yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess just one last kind of cool thing. Again, I guess this goes along the lines of vinyl. Everybody, of course, has seen you know the the first promo copy, white label promo copy, right? But mine came in this cool mailer. Yes. Warner Brothers mailer. Did it have the right? poster in it? 
and it had the poster in it. Oh, yeah, buddy. Oh, That's the best. Gave away my big surprise. I'm so sorry. Because <laughs> when, whenever you see that mailer... That that is man. That's the key mm. right there. Yeah. That's how they were sent out. That's why that's we it. know that those posters did not come in those records. They were sent in that mailer. Right, mm. right. Sent in that mailer, and this wasn't inside the album. It's completely. I won't exactly. unfold it completely. Everybody knows. Exactly. Is it Our just pristine? It looks it, pristine. It. Yeah, I, I don't know that I'm going to ever have that framed. Is that your? Uh, is that your first copy of that? Poster, that's or do you my have first and only copy of that? I have, yeah. Gosh, and that's one of those items yeah. that recently, over the last couple of years, has just absolutely exploded in value. Oh, it's crazy! I mean, it like it's every crazy. time you look at it, the damn thing has doubled almost. It's it's just insane. You know, even a couple of mm. years ago, you could get that thing. Maybe three or four years ago, for maybe five hundred, yeah. six hundred. That thing has easily mm. tripled in price since then. Easy. Easily, yeah. yeah. And you just yeah. don't see them anymore. Insane. You used to see them up quite often, and now you just don't see them. Right. You just don't see them at all, and definitely right. not in that condition. Man, congratulations yeah. on that! What a an yeah, amazing thank you. piece. I, I wanted that mm. forever. It's like one of those check off the list. You know, I wanted that first album promo poster, and uh, a guy uh, contacted me. He had it with the mailer, and the album, everything together, and I'm like, hell yeah. Mm, I couldn't give sold. you my money faster. Enough. <laughs> exactly. What time and what yeah, aircraft cool. carrier, right? That's right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> absolutely. That is, is that a is that a does that make a multiple copy of the first album promo for you though? Uh, the promo I've had. Uh, that's the only one I still have. I, oh, okay. I've had a, a another. I mean, uh, usually it's you know with a variant. I have just like one version of that. So obviously. You know, I have the vinyl where Kissing Time's on the cover, but mm-hmm. not on the vinyl, or where I have the hype sticker that, you know, um, mm-hmm. Kissing Time's not on the cover, but it's on the vinyl, you know, those right. sort of thing. I have those variants, but uh, it's the only promo of the first album that I have. Yeah, oh, nice album. package for you then, That's man. Great. That's awesome. Yeah. So how did that one sort yeah. of slip under your radar? Because that seems like for a vinyl collector, something that you would have been shooting for kind of early on. At, you know, in your kind of yeah. Your... Well, that was it. that was an upgrade. So I had another oh, one, a little bit not as immaculate con- condition. So I did have the album before, but it just uh, this this one sort of came together as a set. So Got it. it's just kind of how that kind of came together. But I had another. One. That's what I do in some cases. I don't know. People have different ways of collecting, but uh, I won't get a total beater copy of something. You know, a higher price thing. I'll, I'll definitely wait. And I'm pretty picky about condition of things as close to new as possible in the same way with vinyl. But in some cases, I will upgrade. I'll have a copy, find a nicer one maybe, and then sell that other copy or what have you. Mm-hmm. Is that a complete set of the reel-to-reels back there? That, yeah, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> that's all, that's, yeah, Live Destroyer, Rock and Roll Over, Love Gun, Live 2, Double Platinum, and Dynasty. That's it. That's awesome, man. This is pretty cool. This is from Eddie Kramer collection. This is a reel from Ace's solo album. Mm. All for nothing, and I'm in need to love those instrumentals. I have that up. Circulating now in fan circles, but this is like from Eddie Kramer's the backstage auction thing. Yep. And it was really cool to hear All for Nothing, uh, which I, you know, forever. I I wasn't even from when I got this tape, it's before everything kind of started circulating, and I had never heard that song. So. I bet I know who you bought that from. Huh? huh? I bet you I know who you bought that I bet I do. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, those those tracks are amazing to listen to. Absolutely killer yeah, to listen cool. to. Really yeah. cool. They so definitely it, were not supposed to circulate, that's for sure. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> Is there anything um, that you're sort of... Are, are there any items right now that you're, that you're really kind of jonesing over and you're like, oh man, here are the three, two or three things or one thing that I'm that you're really kind of gunning for if it ever shows up? Any holes in the collection that you think you have? Me, right now, poor Jason just acquired one. Is the freaking white suit, you know, the white shirt, white. I know we we all know they're not straight jackets they're wearing, but. Oh, the. Oh. That diamond, I'm looking for, yeah, that cover. That's, that's, I still have yet to, and I have different copies of Dynasty, but I, and I was hoping because I really only heard about that in the last two to three years. Yep. Yeah. That's awesome. 
Yeah, that's another one that has just exploded in price. That thing has doubled and tripled over even the last couple of years. It's just gone completely crazy. I wasn't even on my radar. Uh, yeah, I don't think it was in on. I don't think it was on anybody's radar. I think it was kind of a an accidental discovery within you know wax. Someone posted a photo of Dynasty up one day, and we were like, "What the hell is that?" You know, because we knew it existed as an eight track, and some of the cassettes you can see it on, um, but no one had ever really pointed out that. That, that it existed in, in the vinyl world, and then now everybody's wanting a copy of it. Yeah. So yeah, now that's yeah, that all, that's kind of something I'm definitely jonesing for. I'm, I'm trying to find one. Yeah, and there was one just a couple of weeks ago. I think somebody in the group bought it. It was somebody had posted a sealed one for like forty five dollars oh, yeah, for I a buy that. it now on eBay. And we I saw it. that thing every morning on my list. I've got a want list, and you know, and uh, and you know. Somebody else, you know, obviously grab that and good for them. That's awesome. But I'm hoping, you know, to find where the seller maybe doesn't know exactly what they have because I have uh, a misprint alive too. I literally found in a used record store in Kansas City. Mm. It was marked for eight bucks. Mm. Yeah, I, I like I always do for year after year. When I find one in a used record store, I flip it over, and sure enough, it was the misprint with Take Me and everything that we all know. And I paid eight bucks for it. Did you start sweating immediately? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you find other records to buy? Were you like calm and cool and you're like, I'm going to get a Blondie record and I'm going to go get another record? <laughs> you know what I mean? And, yeah. I, you know, I couldn't believe it. And looking through, and they just had your standard fare banged up alive, maybe Dynasty, you know, and uh, it was in pretty good shape. It didn't, I've since put the inserts and different things with it to kind of make it a complete set, but. Yeah, it was it was incredible, and found it for you know what he was pricing at just a regular used alive two for you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping maybe to find be lucky enough to find a dynasty up, out there at some point like that. You know. Yeah. Well, if I run across one, I'll I'll let you know. And and that's so. a tough yeah. one to search for too because you don't um, I don't think you can go on to Discogs and go oh dynasty straight jacket version. No. No. You know you can't. Right. So, so it's, so it's, version, it's just it's a, just a, a an earlier version of the cover, so it wouldn't show up on those things as being a separate version. Right, exactly. It? So it's it's not it's not that you can just have it on a want list and hope every day on your Discogs want list that it'll show up at some point. You know, right? Yeah. Anything yeah. else, John? That's on your on your radar? That uh, no, I, I I think that's kind of. I'm definitely zoned in on trying to find one of those right now. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, cool. it's definitely high on the list. All right, so let's get into the um, top five items for the beginning collector under a hundred dollars. Good luck. Good luck figuring that out, Jeff. <laughs> the beginner's guide. Beginner's guide. Mm. Items under a hundred. Beginner's bucks. guide. Nicholas is super Mm. enthused about this topic, so we're going to let him go first. (laughs) Oh, really? (laughs) Uh, Okay. Really? Okay, all right. All right. Go, go. What do you got? Uh, John has disappeared. Yeah. The first thing uh, I would say for anyone to get, and this sort of depends on condition, so it can creep up over 100. It can go lower than 100 you to sort of get yourself a great sort of vintage tour book. Mm. And you can sometimes find, you know, one like this is probably the most common of all tour books, I'd say yeah. this, or on tour, uh, the 76 one. Um, it's just a great tour book. I, I absolutely love it. You'll, you'll see these faces pop up again in on the double platinum inside thing. They'll also pop up on as the inspiration for the for the paintings for solo albums. Uh it's a great it's a great tour book and you can usually get it for about i think these days sort of 70 or 80 dollars usually yeah. you know in a sort of you know not not in the best best condition i mean my, mine's not great and it's actually got a little rip on the side which actually happened live um during um our tour books edition years ago that i taped um on the show where i pulled it out and i had it rip but I, you probably see myself pull it out and go and anyway, we'll talk about that later. But I actually ripped it live on camera because it caught on the edge of my chair or something. But anyway, so I've just yeah, I've just turned one hundred and ten dollar 
tour book into an eighty dollar tour book magically. That's yeah, follow these tips. But anyway, this I think this is a great starter piece because you go here's a bit of vintage yep. that I can afford, and it's a it's a lovely piece um, from the day, and it's nice and big. And that one's tear stained yeah. because you 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 <laughs> tore it on on camera and cried right on camera onto the tour book. Tears because of the tears. Yeah, that's exactly. Right. That's so, right. Yeah, and this is this my version. Just for anyone is says a live two on it. it doesn't say yep. double platinum yeah. out there. Yeah, cool. yeah, I haven't got the double platinum one yet. I oh, probably will. Yeah, that's my first one. All right. All right, cool. Jason, right, next. you want to go Me? next? Yep. Well, let's see. Hmm. I'll go with this one. I don't have them in any particular order. So uh, <clears throat> you certainly can't buy – this is a, a vintage item. You certainly can't buy it in the box for under $100. And you certainly – you know, we kind of alluded to it. Joe kind of alluded to it in the beginning – some of this vintage stuff almost has to be of a little lesser quality to get them a hundred dollars or less, and uh, and that's what I did when I was growing up and was buying Kiss stuff in the late '80s and early '90s when I didn't have a ton of extra money to spend. So, um, of course, if you buy four of these, you you just used four hundred of your five hundred dollars. So I would say pick one and go nuts. So, but uh, I would say find you some unboxed Migos that aren't in, you know, yeah. dead mint condition or anything like that. And you can probably get these for 75 yeah. bucks or something like that out there. Yep. And Gene is usually the most popular one. People usually right. find the Gene. You know, there's more of those out there, so you can get them for cheaper. Um, and, you know, I've got a set of loose ones that aren't in great shape that are just out there in a box. And then I have some boxed as well. But, yeah, get you some, get you a Migo, you know, to start. And then when you get your next five hundred dollars, you can get a Paul, you know. So yeah, it's, it's I'll cool. go with unboxed amigos. It's a good item. Yeah, I actually thought about both of those about mm -hmm. um, you know wanting to thinking about putting both of those into my uh, into my group of things. Who's next? All right, me, John. Yeah. Go ahead. Rock paper, rock paper, scissors. I'll go. How's that? <laughs> okay. Hang yeah. On one second. Now Joe's getting texts. Yes, I am. <laughs> um, all right, so my uh, the first thing I wanted to show is I thought I thought this is an essential for somebody who's starting off. I think that this is you know, and what I'm showing here is the Dunross Series One set of cards. I just think this is such a cool thing. Um, there you go. Mm -hmm. So I, I grabbed a bunch out of my my collection here. There you go. Yep, I I grabbed the the box out of my yeah showcase in the back there. But are those yeah. full? What's that? Are those this full? full? Yeah, yeah. My, yeah. Piss on you guys. Those my, are five hundred dollar items. Mine's full. <laughs> John, John. I know, just... I know. I couldn't find my set. I couldn't find my individual set. So I was just going to say, Joe <laughs> took it for me. But, but good job. There you go. So yeah, again, out of the packs, but a full set. I think these are really cool. You can put the puzzle together. To me, it's the magical era of uh, you know of Kiss with all the cool Barry Levine shots are in here and all that. You know, all, all the the cool photography. It just um, a great piece of vintage Kiss collecting they, that can be had, I'd say, for probably yeah. around sixty-five, seventy-five yeah. bucks, yeah. something like yeah. that. For sure, out, yeah. you know, out of the box, out of the packs. Um, mm -hmm. You could even, you know, you could start buying some packs too for under a hundred bucks and start putting together a set. That's really cool. Open up those old sure. packs mm -hmm. of cards. But yeah, I think this is an essential mm -hmm. for any beginner. If somebody came up to me and said, "Hey, I want to start. Mm -hmm. Where would you start?" This would be one of the things. Yeah, it was one of the first things I ever had too. So yeah, yeah. me too. Mm -hmm. Me too. That's what got me into the band. I saw those cards when I was a kid, mm -hmm. and before I even heard a song, I saw those cards. I mean, that's what started it for me. So, Joe, we're definitely on the mm -hmm. same page about that for sure. Was that um, one of the things you that you had on your list? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, I was, you know, being silly, showing up, holding up that whole box. I couldn't find my set, but I had, you know. I had to rebuy them all because the the set that I had collected as a kid, I had a scrapbook and I glued them in there with pictures and and different things, and then had to go back and kind of collect the set. But yeah, either yeah, either series one or two, man, those those are great images and and they're forever sort of you know branded into my brain as, as right. you know the first thing that I saw that you know really got me into the band. 
And, and just some <clears throat> Nicholas and I have talked about this too. Some of at least my favorite shots of the band are on those cards. I mean, just mm-hmm. because it's part of your childhood yeah. as well. But man, there are mm-hmm. just some magical yeah. shots that just you don't see anywhere else. You know, they were only yeah. on the cards, and that was kind of where they, you know, where you, where where they kind of existed. Yeah, we'll put we'll right. put one up here, but it, but it is both. I remember Joe said, "This is my favorite shot." I went, "Are you kidding?" Because that's my favorite shot of Gene. It's uh, we'll put it up now. There's one shot of Gene where he's looking down the camera, which we'll show, and it's just it's just ma- it's everything about the demon when he was in full demon character. It just it's a magical shot. Yeah, and you don't see it anywhere right. else, like Joe said. Yeah, incredible. Yeah. Nicholas, did you have that on your list? Did you have the cards? No, I didn't. No, okay. I didn't. But I will. I will say to the people at home: uh, if if you do have one of those boxes that you pick up the boxes without that aren't full, what I did, which is a nice under a hundred dollars solution to it, is I put a little mini box, a little layer inside there, and you do, all you have to do is buy four cards, and it just sits on top. And when you display it, it looks like a full box. So, right. well, my, yeah. my history, my I didn't have series one and series two. I don't have a full case. But when you see it in photos, which I'll show now, it they look like a full full case of boxes. So it's a nice way, a little cheap way of doing it rather than having to pay out the money for a complete box too. It's a little little tip for your display room there. Mm. Very cool. Yes, absolutely. Cool. Yeah, the full box yeah. of those things will cost you four or five hundred dollars and yeah. yeah. So um, so three of us have Don Russ cards. Okay. That's did, right. Did anybody else have Migos? Just me? Anybody Just else have the a live two tour book? Just this. Okay, yeah. I'm just keeping a list over here. Yeah, so yeah. We know very, we're very at cool. So we can go back. Yeah. Yeah. All right, John, you want to go? Okay, so next on my list, since Joe got to that one first, is for every Kiss collection, man, you got to show your allegiance. You got to have a shirt, right? Oh, that's great. You got to have a Kiss shirt. Now, this is my first one. Literally, I ordered this uh, from the order form for a mask, and uh, I was sent. Uh, another order form with the corrected merchandise with Eric included. So this was the shirt I ordered. First one I wore had Eric, you know, Eric's kind of there in the dynasty mm-hmm. image. Mm-hmm. So that was my first t-shirt. So I think any t-shirt, but I think to show your allegiance, right, you gotta, you gotta have a kiss mm-hmm. shirt. You gotta wear one. Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's great. When I was going through and thinking about this, I was trying to come up with different types of things, and T-shirts never occurred to me. That's a great that's a great idea. So what what's the value on a, on that shirt, John? If you were to go out onto eBay or try and buy it uh, from someone's collection, man, this one. I mean, this is literally the one I wore. So I, I mean, maybe Nicholas would know better. I mean, is it? Yeah, look, look, I think I, yeah, that that one would probably be over a hundred. But your point stands. Yeah. You're going to get yourself a great T-shirt, yeah. you know, right? Like and, you know, that 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 actually is an interesting one because that's the second version that they started sending. You see, you mailed in to get that one. Yes, I did. Uh, yeah, because that that's the second version. Because the version that was actually went out on tour has that bit of white between above um, Gene, Paul, and. Ace, that's white, and then it says World Tour 1980-81 yes, on it. So yes, yeah, so this, this is this is the wow. this is the male version, not sold right. on tour. So yeah, right. it's cool. It's hard to find that one. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be tough to find a true vintage shirt these days for under a hundred dollars. Right. You know what you could certainly um, find are those iron. You know, people who have ironed on shirts from back yes. in the day. Yeah, you could find yeah, those. Yeah. So something like that would be really cool, right? So you could definitely Absolutely. go. Absolutely. I see those and, transfers everywhere. I mean, I yes. don't know if you could find a place to to have those redone. But uh, those transfers, man, I love those old shirts. <laughs> Even even the yeah. even the shirts that were transferred back then, you yeah. know, those transfer yeah. shirts are way cheaper than your actual concert shirts or your mail order shirts or anything like that. Any of those shirts that are on those order forms are mm-hmm. stupid expensive today, you know. Right. And right. Uh, but you get those. I've got some really cool iron-on transfer shirts that I just love, love. Yeah. And I know I know I didn't pay a hundred dollars a piece for them. Probably forty dollars a piece for them. Do you so, guys right. remember the iron-on shops? Iron on sure. t shirt shops. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is one of those smells that will transport you back to that time yeah. immediately. That like burning yeah. rubber kind of plastic yeah. smell. <laughs> I remember yeah. the one here in our town was called Shirtland and you know, you could get they had they sold iron ons and stuff like that, but we would also go up there for like school things, like we would have our little basketball team for the fifth grade or something, sure. and we'd go up there and put Purcell's Panthers and letters on these little 
steam iron on transfer things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I loved that. And Jason, yeah, you were, then, you, you were then, the star on the basketball team, right? Because you were eight foot two I, when you were I 11. Was. <laughs> I, it, in, in, jun- in junior high, I was. Yes. In junior high, I was. <laughs> when I got to high school, uh, we had two uh, guys over seven foot, a, mm. a six eight, a six six, and then me, six four. Wow. So yeah. we, were, we were 24 and two that year. So. <laughs> Wow, it, it's funny. The, it's it's funny the whole iron on thing because it, it was a very '70s thing, which was totally replaced by. I remember my young, very early teen years and sort of late like childhood years seeing they'd all disappeared and they'd become the patches and the backpack back right. patches shops in the '80s. It was all about you know like you remember you just remember those shops right. they were just all hanging there those kind of slightly sure. diamond shaped ones that came in when right. everyone was doing that to their denim jackets. I remember. And I'm pretty sure most of those were like not 100% official either. I remember seeing some terrible looking ACDC and Iron Maiden and Judas Priest ones Absolutely. as well. But it was interesting. So like Iron Ons were the 70s and Patches were the, the 80s. It was a, yep. a cool little move on kind of thing, I remember. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, nostalgia. The, the, wall, <laughs> the wall of Iron Ons, right? There was just a massive wall. And you'd be like, I'll oh, have no. one, 108 in blue medium, please. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and a boy's slim. <laughs> oh, boy. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. All right. So who's right. up? I've lost track. Nicholas. Nicholas, are you up? Oh, am I? Your, okay. Your second item. Okay. So the second one I would say, actually, is... Now, this... I'll just caveat this that this particular one that i'm holding up is way over a hundred dollars but it's only because i couldn't find the one that you can pick up for a hundred dollars so i would pick up for any beginner copy of double platinum oh, on album that's your 2014 exclu- ex- yeah, yeah. exclusive but, yeah. but 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 what i was about to say i couldn't can't find a normal one my beat up one is i think downstairs somewhere i don't know but this is if you were starting off and you know you just because we're saying if you're saying beginner maybe they're also could be beginning to listen to Kiss, and nice. because this goes from seventy three to seventy eight, I think this is this distills. I know there's slightly different versions, but it distills what classic Kiss is. I mean, you're going into She and you know all those ones that kind of, you know, got, you know, mate take taken out of the set list a lot later on. Just that hundred thousand years Black Diamond, and that's now to me this this is, this is all, as well as being my first Kiss album I ever bought. This is classic Kiss to me, and this is this is a great yeah. compilation. So I'd say, if you're really yeah. starting out and you didn't want to buy, you know, however many albums, just just buy this one and, and you sorted for a little while because there's so many great tracks on there. And Firehouse is about ten times better because they've sped it up. It's not so plodding and slow. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So that that's my one. So pick that up anywhere. I don't know. Pick it up for twenty dollars, a beat up copy because the music sure. should still be great. You know. Yeah. You can even find yeah. a nice, you know minty-ish copy with all you know the inserts and everything for probably 40 or 50 bucks when you think joe oh yeah John? yeah i would think yeah. easily yeah because yeah. i mean that platinum award doesn't really usually bring all that much extra yeah. money you know no no they printed millions of those things so <clears throat> the uh um, right. I'm, I'm gonna i know you're next jason but i'm gonna jump ahead only because i had the same um i was along thinking along the same lines as nicholas um, just leave me out what's that just leave me out all the yeah, way. Yeah, it's not your show, Jason. Please, I, um, it's not but, my show. So, so my thing, my I thought it was alive too, because I I figured this this to me you got the most bang for your vintage buck if you were gonna go back and and collect some you know uh, some vintage kiss on vinyl, you know you would get the tattoo, you get the order form, you get the book, you get that iconic gatefold photo that everybody talks about you know any anybody who was a kid at the time and opened that record up you just thought man that's the coolest thing you've ever seen ever so yeah we were definitely nicholas you and i on the same wavelength with just different different records because this is kind of a greatest hits package of that time and a compilation of that time as well so um but yeah i thought i think you know i think that's a good to have a piece of music as a you know as a foundational piece of any you know vintage collection i think would be cool vintage or otherwise i guess Mm. All right, I'll go next since Joe skipped me. Uh, I'm going to go a little (laughs) bit more obscure vintage, something you couldn't buy in a store, but I do think, and I actually looked some up on eBay just to make sure that I wasn't out of my mind, that you can find this piece for $75 to $100 
so, mo- most of the time. Sometimes they'll get up just a bit over $100, maybe $125 or $130. But they usually set around $75 to $100. You couldn't buy this in the store, but if you went and saw Kiss in 1979, you could get one of these foam mm. sponges yeah. that dropped from mm. the ceiling. So they're not particularly super rare, but mm-hmm. I, th- I-, I wanted to pick something that wasn't necessarily something... You could go out into a store and buy, and they made tons and tons of, like the Don Russ cards or something like that. So mm-hmm. I picked the Dynasty Kiss Army sponge. And you know $100. that it was at a show. Most okay. more than likely, it was at a show. You know, absolutely from the at a show. Mm-hmm. Smells wonderful. So <laughs> that's that's my third pick. You are sponge worthy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, John. Well, I may I may have to change my second one here i mean along the lines of vinyl i didn't pick a specific one but i was saying anything from the 2014 issues yes absolutely uh not with an album specifically in mind but i just felt you know these are still you know available and they're i think they're definitive as far as sound and if you still wanted to get the inserts and things that came with the original album they're with those reissues so so i had the 2014 reissue See, it, it, and that, they sound think, along those same lines. Right. It, did, when he stood up, did it speed up for you? Guys? Yeah, it did. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, he's the Flash. <laughs> <laughs> that was very funny. That was awesome. So I guess I guess, like I guess a, you're like a, ben, like a Benny Hill chase. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> but anyway, I mean, that's that's yeah, very. So, yeah, go ahead. No, no, I was just going to say, so, uh, you know, because with vinyl already being mentioned, I, I thought quickly then, I guess View Master Viewer, the viewers oh. for me were yeah. early ones. And you can find a lot of these already open. Sure. Now, obviously, this is like a sealed set or something, but you can find already open sets. And even the View Masters themselves, fairly cheap. It might be about $100 maybe to get right. the open set and maybe a viewer. But these were really cool as a kid, and the View Masters... I think we're kind mm-hmm. of a cool item. Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. The 2014s are a good way to go, and it, and it kind of goes in line with one of the items that I'm going to probably show next, where it's you know it's something today that's much that harkens back to something vintage that's much cheaper to buy the version today, and you mm-hmm. still get all of the goodness of, of vintage and don't have to break the mm-hmm. bank to get it. So, but anyway, we'll get there. Right, right. So, cool. yeah. you're up, Nicholas. Uh, I think the next one I'd like to say is. Um, you can usually pick up some of the more common uh, vintage posters. So I just grabbed this one out of my set, and it's, it's double-sided, so i got this one, the, which I'll, I'll flash on screen. Mm-hmm. None of this will actually be in screen. I'm just showing the guys. And then the other side is another one from the same era, which is that one as well. So you can you can usually pick up some quite good versions um, for under $100 of some of the 1977 kind of posters, 77, 78. Not, I mean, the rarest stuff goes up into the 200 250 and then crazy prices after that but if you, if you want a little taste of you know uh, the, you know the, the kids bedroom wall it sounds quite creepy um if you if you <laughs> if you want if you want to reminisce about about you know being a kid and having kiss posters on your wall some of these things are still attainable and even if you weren't a kiss yeah. fan in the 70s it it would give you that same kind of feeling i mean they some of them are very daggly and do- dorky kind of designs but that's kind of the you know, the beautifulness of, of the retro kind of feel of these kind of things. So, you know, you can pick yourself up with some of these vintage posters for 75, 80, 85, 90, that kind of area, even right. maybe bang on 100, you know, for some of them, depending on, you know, if they've got some thumbtacks in the corner or if there's a little tear. I never even care about that. I, I mean, you know, I don't eventually you'd, repl- you'd, you'd replace them with something that's a bit more mint. But I just, you know, when you put them in these kind of frames or look at them, you know, you you can always just trim the edges off, as we always joke about. That. No, but don't don't do that. Um, no, but you know what I mean. You put them in a frame, and you're not you're not paying attention to the little corners. You're paying attention to these amazing great graphics, anyway. So I'd just say, you know, yeah. posters really. Mm. Yeah, it That's almost what I did absolutely. Go ahead, go ahead, Joe. Okay, go you go you go go. <laughs> no, I was going to say, in your defense, Nicholas, when I was a young kid, five or six or seven mm. years old, whenever the corners of my posters would get eaten up with tack holes, I would chop the corners of them off and make them all 
<laughs> you know, I did the same. Hexagonal. I did, yeah, I think most of yeah, them. Except I'm for OCD. Joe Lawrence. So. I couldn't stand for the tattered edges. I'd have to <laughs> clean it up, trim it up. Yeah. I'm, yeah. yeah. OCD. Course, note to self, <laughs> never buy anything was, from John Humphrey. Never buy anything yeah. from Nicholas <laughs> Buckland. Well, I've, I've seen yes. to go back and replace all of that. But the stuff <laughs> yeah. I had as a kid, yes, yeah. absolutely, I was trimming up corners. In our, in our, mine and John's defense, we were six, Nicholas, not uh, mm. 36. Exactly. <laughs> 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 yeah. I should know better, <laughs> basically. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Joe, you want to go or you want, want me to go? Or you were going to say something. What were you going to say? I don't remember. You don't remember? Okay. No, nah, I don't remember. Go ahead. You, you're up. Go. You do it. Okay. So um, this is a repro, an official reproduction. <laughs> hmm. uh, yeah. um, something that you couldn't get now for $100 if it's in really, really good shape, vintage. Uh, you can find tattered and torn ones for 60 or 70 bucks or something like that. Mm-hmm. But... Um, but if you wanted to get the uh, lunchbox, you could go yeah, get the, the gray one version for fifty bucks, sixty bucks, or something mm. like that. Uh, you can find them, and it's a you know pretty much an exact replica. This this shot is a little blurry, but uh, it does. Mm. I think it comes with a instead of a thermos, it comes with a flask and shot glasses or something like that. Right. Because yeah, when every kid's yeah. going to school, what do they need? <laughs> they need. <laughs> they need <laughs> <laughs> it's bizarre, right? right? You, yeah. you, need, uh, you need a little pick me up in third hour. <laughs> but these come out, you know. Uh, I think it you, make the, you make the mistake, Joe, of thinking that any any modern children are actually collecting kids. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or yeah. lunch, or who, or carrying a lunchbox for God's sake. Exactly. Yeah. A true. metal lunchbox. What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's great it comes with it just comes with shot glasses and a flask <laughs> four right. four shot glasses for your friends you'd be like hey i went to my dad's yeah. liquor cabinet here's everybody yeah. <laughs> what are these for i'm a kiss fan i don't have any friends <laughs> <laughs> oh that's one great. for me one for me one for me <laughs> yeah. one for you one two for me exactly but uh Popular uh, kid in sixth grade with my kids. Exactly. Lunch, 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 lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I had to drink my bourbon out of a thermos. <laughs> <laughs> totally get <gather>. Old school. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. So you kids don't know what you're that's missing. Awesome. That's good though. That's that's really good. Actually, I, I like that a lot. I have one as well. That's one of the yeah. newer things. Got right. yeah. I think right. Sure. So Biff Bang Pow did it uh, 2015. It says, two th- you know, it's printed 2015. It looks like they were numbered. There's a hologram on here that says 2,933 out of 2,960. It's a weird, yeah, it's a weird no, number. Isn't it? so, but anyway, oh, and, you know, you couldn't take it when you're in the fifth grade because it says for 14 plus. <laughs> 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 okay. So, 14 is the acceptable age to start drinking. <laughs> and carrying a lunchbox. 14. Exactly. <laughs> Finally, I hit the age. I can carry a lunchbox to school. So I don't know, Jason, if you had any issues getting that shipped when you purchased it, but I had to order that a couple of times. It would it would arrive and you could just rattle it and it just it was broken glass in there. Oh, I think yeah? the shock glass. <laughs> Some of the first ones weren't packed properly, it. and it took a couple times to get it because it was just it was just broken glass. Oh, there we I go. Actually, hear a little <laughs> rattle. <laughs> Can you hear that? <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I don't know. It may be. I never checked. I mean, you really? I mean, it it, it would bounce around like bits of broken glass <laughs> in a box. I, it was, yeah. it was pretty obvious. I mean, who would who would guess that loose shot glasses would break inside of a piece of metal? Yeah, you know, <laughs> I mean, it was all shrink wrapped and packaged up and vacuum sealed, but they forgot to put a little padding in there for the the old shot glasses. Forgot those were going to bounce around a bit. You could just hear the people who manufactured those. They'll be like, "Those nerds are never going to open these things up. Don't worry, just shrink wrap them and off they go." <laughs> That's right. <laughs> John Humphrey's like, right. "This is bullshit." <laughs> <laughs> oh, a refund. That's right. A refund, damn it. We got Humphrey yeah. on the line again. Send out another lunchbox. 
<laughs> oh, me. Yeah, All right, John, yeah. what do you got? Or Joe? Is it your turn, Joe? I think I'm up. Yeah, Joe's, Joe's turn. So, I think so. Did I? I kind of I cheated, messed it up, and went twice on, on my turn. So that, I might have screwed right. it up a little bit. Yeah, right. So I was, Joe, go. I'm going to go with this one for now, and then we'll talk about the last one. So I think this is a really cool piece of vintage, um, you know, Kiss merchandise that somebody can easily get for, um, you know, 30 or 40 bucks. I think this is a cool piece. Oh, that, yeah, man. You know, this old, it was this on your list too, John? This version. Oh, yeah. He's got that. Yep. Yeah. I still got to get that, the version John has. In yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what yeah, version is that, awesome. John? The Robert Duncan book. Yep. What version is that, John, that you are holding up there? I have to put on my old man glasses. Is this from the UK? Nicholas, do you know? That that different gray it's UK cover? UK in Canada on the back. Let's see. Can't remember. Yeah, this one's printed in the US. I wonder if that's a UK or a Canadian version, John. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. Yeah, it's yeah. UK. UK. Yeah. Okay, cool. UK version. So yeah, anyway, this was the um the the story of KISS up and until that time. Um, and it has some, you know, some of the great old school black and white shots in it. So this is definitely a cool, to me, it was an interesting little piece of merchandise that you can have if you wanted to be a vintage yeah. collector and kind of harkens back to the old days. An unofficial book, but still a cool piece, I mm. thought. That, you know, again, 30, yeah, 40 bucks, you could have it in your collection. I don't know. I, I don't think that with stuff like that, that it matters that that's unofficial. I think that's a great piece from the day. I mean, technically, you could say any magazine cover like Teen Beat, which had or 16, which had Kiss on it, is not an official Kiss product, but sure, it was, sure, it's an yeah. official book on Kiss, you know, so mm -hmm. I think it's a great one. I love that one. Yeah, cool. It's, it's funny you say that, Nicholas, because that, that never has popped into my mind that this is actually an unofficial book. Yeah. It is. I, but I've never even, yeah. I've always just thought about it as this is just one more piece of vintage collectibles that you mm -hmm. need to get in your collection. Yeah, Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. And I never get old. I, the the back. The you back, never get old. I never get old. I mean, <laughs> that's uh, amazing. That's why. That's why the, I said he's been with me since the dawn of time. He actually is immortal. The, the audience all at once said, <laughs> "You, we thought you were old the second time you were on the show." They're like, "What are you doing here?" Again? Um, but but the back of this says "punk power," which to me, you know, makes no sense. Mm, the hips right. of Elvis and the Beatles' hair used to be thought shocking. Then there was the vicious beat of the Rolling Stones, the sexual put-ons and turn-ons of David Bowie, the calculated craziness of Alice Cooper, but the rock world hadn't seen anything until Kiss exploded on the mm. scene. So, yeah. So I, so I heard about that, that, um, that Robert Dun Duncan actually said he didn't do the back. That was his company that did that. He was just like, punk pal? Like, what the hell? Like, when, <laughs> when it came out. And it, it just, that was the first time he'd ever seen that. And so, you guys yeah. heard of Kiss? <laughs> no, it must be a punk band. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, John, what do you got? Well, speaking along those lines, when you mentioned 16, I just picked, these are pretty random, but I think any magazine, really, these just happen to be the set of four. Yeah. Yeah, those each are each guy. But yeah. yeah, these are, you know, again, unofficial. You know, the band didn't put them together. But I think any magazine, uh, I have kind of different ones. I just love, if there's just a... Yes. You know, I love great covers and just, you know, random stuff. This was actually something, oh, that's you right. know. Mm -hmm. so I think, I don't know if I can narrow it down to one. There's a lot of great magazines, but I, I think, you know, visually, think, um, man, I just, I spent hours listening to music and, and looking through these magazines, looking at pictures, you know, mm -hmm. imagining what they would be like live, you know, or whatever. Sure, right? sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, magazines is definitely a good way to go, and you can get almost any of them for under $100. You know, some of them trend up there in the $70, $80, $90 range, mm -hmm. some of the harder-to-find ones. But, yeah, you can – magazines all day long. Music Life from Japan would be a yeah, good one. Yeah, those are great. I was going to say yeah. those. Yeah, those are great. Uh, hey, oh, sorry, yeah. Joe. No, yeah. no, no. I'll, I'll, I've got another one sitting here, but this, this was one of the ones that I – I was between two of them, so I'll, I'll just show this now. But I think this is a great way to get a, a piece of foreign merchandise or memorabilia from back in the yes. day. Yeah. Um, that's just mm. jam-packed with like okay. the coolest photos of the band yeah. from back in that time. And it's, mm. it's Kiss-centric, so from top to bottom, any of those music, those two music life um, 
magazines that were kiss specific i thought were just fantastic right. it can be gotten i think mm-hmm. for right around a hundred bucks maybe a little bit less you know, yeah. Like yeah. yeah or you know yeah. they've got the reissues of those too that um yeah. Yeah. That came out a couple of years ago that you can absolutely get for under a hundred dollars so you know mm-hmm. and they're they're really really nice they were really well done so mm-hmm. all right nicholas what do you got I just thought when you were saying that about foreign merchandise, I was thinking every single piece of American merchandise is foreign merchandise, technically, from my point of view. For your point of view. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Bloody foreigners. Um, (laughs) Exactly. The The next thing I got, and this this is, there's there's a whole bunch of, um, there's a certain era called the the Spencer's crap era, but there are some really fun things that came out in that era. I and agree. you can still pick this stuff up for a hundred, and there's no reason or logic to me picking this one other than it, it's fun and I like it. So just this is just this one's an example of from that era. But I love the dynasty um, teddy <laughs> bear, just the, the, the glitter and the, the yes. glitter and the gold, and you know, look at this. Yeah, got the, it's actually a real silk level. cape, and it's even got a little bit of his, <laughs> you know the spider claws on here. And I, I, I know it's Spencer's crap, but. I love it. That's cool. I and love it's those bears. And it's, it's kitsch and it's dorky and it's it's not cool in any way, but I like I it anyway. I disagree. I yeah. think yeah. it's cool. Yeah. I yeah. have both sets so, of those bears those in the boxes. So cool, yeah. Especially with the dynasty, you know. Yeah. Yeah. The Peter Chris looks killer, man. I love him. Yeah. I just love him. So. Um, the, he's going to sit with me for the rest of the year. Uh, oh, the rest of the episode. <laughs> now, um, actually, actually, what happened, and this is a bad, just warning anyone on storage, if you have them loose, the love gun set I have, unfortunately, when they're all pushed into a box, the the silver on Ace's feet, it's that kind of, it's a different kind of, it's not, not like a sewing stuff, it's almost like that plasticky kind of feel to it, and must have been like heat pressure, but when it came off, like bits of it just, when the legs and when you pulled it out they just it just all ripped off so all the feet and the legs are all in big chunks of the silver now which is that happens it, that happen, when you store them you know yeah that happens to those uh, slippers that came out around the same time as well um <laughs> my god what? you know we are on the nerdiest podcast in the world <laughs> oh, sir. Oh, sir. people judge you differently than they did in high school oh, I think they're talking about us. No way. When you're talking about your Spencer's Dynasty Bear, be careful with how you (laughs) be careful with how you store them. My God, don't store them under. (laughs) You may lose. You may lose two dollars off your off your ten dollar item. (laughs) About we we recommend about ninety two degrees is about the highest tolerance for heat because the silver will rub (laughs) right (laughs) off. My God, I want off of this show. How do I get off this show? <clears throat> you are signed you for life. Climate, you know, climate yeah. controlled storage for this stuff, Joe. Yeah. Very yeah. important, man. <laughs> Very important. Have you not learned anything from this show? Oh, yeah. God. John Humphrey, your new third guest host, yeah. everybody. Yeah. Yet at, the same, yet at the same time, Joe's at home with white gloves on with his vinyl. And, yes. And, you know, yes. Like, you know, putting it in and sliding but, it because in. Because for, for, for some reason, it you know, you're a cooler guy if you collect all this vinyl with yeah. crap inside yeah. of it that, than you are if you collect the stuff that actually came off of the order forms in the vinyl. You said it, Jason. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not. You no, know, there's there's plenty of stuff that we've shown. It's cool, but it, talking about a dynasty bear and how to how to store them, and that's just what. What if the dynasty lot, bear would come out at seventy nine? Yeah. No, 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 whatever, no. man. You talking about all that cool stuff sitting back there behind it, the, the Humphrey's head, right there? That damn plastic guitar. No, no. This damn plastic guitar here. Yeah. That. Yeah, this is cool, right? Now that can be stored at about 112 degrees. <laughs> Make sure no. it's labeled. Too warm. Well, the next Too starts warm. warming. Too warm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that actually, oh, oh. the next bit, it actually plays better than it does when it's perfectly straight. <laughs> okay, now that I've just alienated the whole audience again for the ninth yes. episode in a row. All the hate mail to Joe Wallace. That's right. Jason, are you next? Or is John next? John, I'll go. I'll go. I'll go next. Yeah. 
Nicholas just went. Oh. So um, yeah, so Jason. Nick. I had two books up here, uh, clearly unofficial, and I've never really even thought of them that way. Uh, the Robert Duncan book was one, um, but I I knew Joe was probably going to say that one, so I brought another book that took me back to that time, and I actually had this book before I had the Robert Duncan book. I had this when I was a very little child, and so this reminds me a lot of being a kid and collecting Kiss, but I always loved this Headliners book, too. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's yeah. got a ton of photos inside of it as well. What year is that? Is that 78? Uh, 78, I think it is, but let me look just to be sure. It was Wayne O'Brien's. So Wayne O'Brien, if you're watching... I got your book. Um, it doesn't appear to be dated anywhere, Nicholas. Hold on. Oh, here we go. No. No date. 78, yep. Yeah. By John Swinson, Swanson, however you say his name. Mm -hmm. But uh, I always loved it when you get to the back here. It's got... Um, it talks about each member. It has their vital statistics and stuff. And it mm -hmm. shows, like, the real, you know, the real name. Ace Fraley is Paul Fraley. You know, this April 27, 1955, he's a Taurus, he's 6'2", he weighs 160 pounds, he has brown hair, brown eyes. Likes long he walks on the beach. Some high school. <laughs> he is married, his wife named Jeanette. His stage name, Space Traveler from the Planet Jindel. You know, I just loved mm -hmm. reading that stuff. Yeah. That's yeah, cool. Anyway, so that's... It's like the Beatles. Like the, yeah, it is very, yeah. Like a fan magazine or something or a... You know, a girl's diary with the, the, the Beatles. That's right. That's mm. right. Yeah. Joe. All right. So I think this is my last one, right? Yeah, it should be the fifth and the last one. For so everybody. it was between uh, the music life and this. And interestingly enough, when I was looking up the prices on some of these things, I thought, oh, you could get the first version of this for under 100 bucks, And that's just not the case anymore. I'm, I'm surprised. They can go from anywhere from 140 to like 200 bucks. Um but the second Kiss Marvel Super Special, I think, is another really awesome thing that you can get for maybe about seventy-five or eighty bucks. I know, Jason, you're looking, you're, you're looking. So this, I broke my own That's rule. Like Eric Singer. Hey, yeah. what's Eric Singer doing? So I got this. I got this signed <laughs> at the uh, Detroit um, convention back in the day, and I would never do this that today. I would just have Gene and Paul sign this and wait to try and get the other two to sign it. But at, I, at that time, I didn't really have a ton ton of Kiss merchandise, and this was one of the things that I had. So yeah, I had mm. um, um, the the band of of the of that era sign it, and Gene, of course, always in black, right? That you can't you can't mm. understand. So that that thing is definitely worth less than a hundred dollars. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt about it. <laughs> but if anybody wants to pay a hundred bucks for it. <laughs> Comment below. Comment um, below yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so this is a really cool. I, I thought that the one with the blood and all that would be cooler, but it's. I was kind of surprised when I look, went and looked at the prices on those. They seem to be like 140, 150 bucks yeah. at least nowadays. But this one can be had for around that seventy, maybe eighty dollar kind of range, depending. Does on that one have the poster? It Joe, does. does that have the poster yeah. in it with the, the George yeah. Bush poster? It was painted by George Bush. No, I don't think it's the same George Bush. <laughs> it's, it's painted by George Bush. And then he became president. <laughs> and then he became president. Well, he does do art. The W does art. He does. Right. He does. It, w it, could, does be, it could be him. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So anyway, that's, I, I thought that was another cool sort of <laughs> different piece of merchandise yeah. that somebody could I have. Agree. That's agree. very sure. out of the time. And, you know, you when back then you could see people buying that stuff and, and digging it. So Yeah. 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 I John, what's your last I love one? both those. I love the first one, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Both those super specials are very cool. Sure, sure. What you got, John? What's up next? Well, my last one for me would be, um, and you can get these in varying conditions, and I think the price is around 100 because you, you do see it for quite a bit, or the, the set of color forms. Mm-hmm. Mm. Right? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it'll depend, obviously, but... Um, <clears throat> I mean, obviously, I have the rub and play. That's much, you know, much rarer. Way more. But yeah, uh, yeah. I think the color form set, you know, obviously kind of pops up from time to time. And this was something I had as a, as a kid, along with the Viewmasters. So. Sure. So I had I had the color forms when I was a kid, but I didn't have the on-tour game. A friend of mine had the on-tour game, and I was always so envious that he had the game. And I think that's yeah. another great mm -hmm. piece that you could probably get for around 100 bucks. I think, right? Is yeah, the on-tour on game. Yeah. 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 If it's not mm -hmm. dead mint yeah. and you yeah. know 
every yeah. other piece, you know, you can usually find it for about seventy-five or eighty, maybe ninety bucks or mm. something like that. So yeah, color yeah. forms are right on the edge there. You know, I usually see right. those for about a hundred and twenty-five or something, but uh, yeah. you can yeah. get lucky some, and look up and some of them it. where they've actually where they've actually the pa- the pieces are not mint inside. Sometimes it right. ducks back down under a hundred. So if if you're right. just wanting right. it for display. I, I don't really care if it's not mint inside, you know. My, I, I know my. I've got a lovely box for my makeup kit, and all the makeup's been used, but it, it displays beautifully. So, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. All right, guys. Okay. This was interesting because yeah, not, it was not tough. A, not a lot of uh, overlap. How many have we done? How many have we done? One, two, I think that's three. It. That's five. I've only done four. Have you? I did. Well, I did. I did the Kiss tour book. Double platinum. The bear, the poster. poster. I got my fifth one to do. All right, do it. Some, do somehow, it. I don't know. How, I don't know. That's weird. Happened. <clears throat> no, well, the la- the last one's a joke because it can be picked up for ninety nine dollars. I knew that was coming. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> Out now. <laughs> Get it now. It has all the merchandise that you that is all the way over. $100. All the stuff you can't so afford is in so there. You, yeah. you can't oh. afford, and you can and you can sit there and just look at it. So, out now, hottestbrandbook.com. As funny as that is, <laughs> yeah, I think that's, that's a legitimate that's answer. Yeah, <laughs> that's a legitimate answer for because for a hundred oh, bucks, you can have pictures yeah. of all of that shit, and not waste your mm. damn money like we fools do. <laughs> so. So we're gonna do hottest brand book. Yeah, it, it kind of yeah. sums up Nicholas. He he's he's le- legitimate and self-serving all at the same time. So there you go. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so before oh, we come up with our, okay. I guess the list of things that we came up with here, are there any other things we can think of that that kind of fall into that range? What about the puzzles? Do you think do you can get a puzzle for under a hundred bucks these days? Some of yeah. occasionally. You gotta have I, your cereal. <laughs> no, you oh, don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That, that, that's, that's, for so that's, that's for Joe. That's for Joe. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that's yeah, actually like it. if if they'd have come up like it would have been interesting. It's kind of a weird thing that I wonder if there was branded cereal back then. Was there as far back as like seventy seven or seventy eight? Do you think there was branded cereal? Because I think didn't they like start to come out with like a team cereal and. Dukes of Hazard, like stuff that was a little bit later, wasn't there cereal around all those brands? Well, but but early kids, 80s, there was, def- there was well, definitely. Yeah, we'll, we'll now yeah, find 80s. this out and, and edit them in if we can find some seventies branded cereal. Yeah, they'll be on screen now. If not, there'll be nothing on screen now. Because you'd be surprised that Kiss wouldn't have done it back in the day <laughs> if it were available to you know to have yeah. been done, right? Right. right. Yeah. As far as the puzzles, Joe, I, I, I think, see, the puzzles for me, and I looked at them when I was out there looking through my stuff to, yeah. to grab, and I feel like a lot of that stuff falls right at, like, the $125 mark. Mm-hmm. Yeah, know? it's hard. I mean, it's, it's yeah. like the color forms. It's just right on that line, right. you know. It's right on the line. Sometimes you can look up and find a lesser, you know, maybe a puzzle that's missing a piece or two. And if you want to buy that, and you're not putting the puzzle together anyway, you're just going to display the box. Who cares if it's missing two or three pieces? You can probably right. find those for eighty bucks or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean the puzzles is is legitimate. It's in thing. the in yeah, the ball in the ballpark. Yeah, it, it's in I, the ballpark. I think yeah. the whole discussion sort of brings up the the topic of um, where the Kiss collecting market is right now, and how valuable and how expensive everything is. Almost everything vintage is is well over a hundred bucks at this point. Yeah, you know, a hundred and fifty or more, kind of. You know, in any kind of condition, almost everything. Like you think about the notebooks, um, probably mm-hmm. to your point, Jason, the puzzles. You know, many, 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 many things that that were that are common. You know, not not like high end collector's stuff, but stuff that was just sort of like around back in the day um, is well over a mm-hmm. hundred bucks these days. You know. Why, yeah. why do we think that? Why do we think that is at the moment? Is it? Is it? There's, there's no. There's no real singular event that is causing this, other than just maybe. Maybe people are getting into an age bracket where they've got more disposable income. Like as as we rise to, you know, the same people that move from being in their thirties and you know starting out with a new house and that and now they've got a bit. You know, they're a bit more established, so now they've got a bit more to yeah. spend. I'm, I'm just thinking. I, I, I'm speaking to my queen guy, and and he was he was saying that the thing that changed their industry is like 
90 and a hundred dollar vinyl has gone to 400 or right. 400 500 dollars because of the bohemian rhapsody movie so they because had a singular movie, event yeah. Where, yeah. where everyone just got back <laughs> into it so it's only a few years old that stuff like 45s have gone up to three or 300 pounds you know yeah. for some you know because of that but we don't really have that event like nothing you know I'd, maybe the end of the road tour but I, I don't know what is driving these prices so high no, they've been they've been up there for the last few years before the tour for yeah. sure. You know, we we've seen a, a huge rise in the past four or five years. Maybe it's I don't know, maybe it's um you know, we've got all these Facebook groups and all of these people, all tens of thousands of people in these groups and you're putting it in, in people's face. Awareness maybe it has Awareness, more to do yeah. with it than, yeah. than anything. Um where people just didn't realize or know that you could get that stuff and you know, you've got some high rollers in the game now that are yeah. paying big bucks, and people may think it's worth more than what it actually is. Mm-hmm. You know, when once you take those one or two or three buyers out of the mix or something like that. Yeah, setting a know. little bit of a false market, yeah. Maybe but, maybe a little bit. But, I mean, you look at, like, the, the notebooks from the 70s, you know, those are mm-hmm. hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Yes. And th- those kinds of things are surprising to me. You know, where some of the higher end collectibles aren't as surprising, but like the notebooks and some of this stuff is just really strange that they've exploded. Like, I don't think you can get a complete notebook for 300 bucks, 250 bucks. Well, I mean, it depends on, it depends. But if, I mean, I I think a cup, some of those lines of the notebooks you can get for 150, 175. But when you move into those dynasty era ones, those are $300 all day long. Sure. And it's yeah. just, it's mind-boggling to me because you know they made tens of thousands of those. We've talked about it before. We've had new notebooks come out, sure. you know, in the past 15 or 20 years that are not worth anything. You can't give them away. Nothing, yeah. right. And uh, I think right. I, my, my theory behind that is that the 78, 77, 78 ones were at the height of their popularity. So a lot <laughs> more people bought them because they were cool and perhaps kept them by dynasty. A lot of those kids had gotten out of Kiss because they'd become a bit more of a kiddie band. Mm-hmm. And the kids that collected them wrote in them and threw sure. them away. So before it was like teenagers right. collecting them. Sure. And by 79, they either weren't buying them because they weren't cool. It weren't, you know, kids weren't as cool anymore. Or, or, or it suddenly the age bracket goes younger. And what do younger kids do? Um, you know, they probably use them and, and don't take care of them the same way as maybe a teenager might put it into a box in his cupboard. So I, I have a feeling right. that. With that, some of that seventy nine, and and that's why a lot of that Aussie stuff, like even down here, Aussie nineteen eighty merchandise is super hard to find, because kids cut it up and played with it, or their mum threw it out before they got a choice. Right. When when you're into your seventeen or eighteen year old, your mum's not touching your stuff anymore. You know, it's like it's right. staying in your box. You move move it on to college, or you store it under the house. You take better care of it. That's just my theory. That why I think you're it's right. Seventy nine onwards, you know. And it's and it's interesting that that eighteen month period there changed everything, you know. Yeah. Between seventy yeah. seven yeah. and and seventy nine. Hey John, I know you're a big yeah. Beatles collector too, among other things. Um, have you noticed yeah. the same sort of rise in Beatles merchandise as well? Like. Yeah, I mean it's it's the prices are just about as high as they've ever been, uh, but by the same account you know elvis stuff i'm also a big elvis fan i don't collect beatles memorabilia or elvis memorabilia like i do kiss but like elvis stuff the fan base obviously is is much older now and 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 especially his records and stuff that were once very valuable are now coming down in price Mm -hmm. so again you know i you know time i guess we'll we'll kind of we'll see how all this sort of plays out but Beatles stuff is still is still up there price wise pretty uh, uh, a lot of the original 60s stuff is, is, is can be highly collectible I think we talked about Elvis and a little bit that, that there's not re- on, on one of the more recent shows that there's not really an outlet for Elvis music anymore really you know the the Beatles yeah. you still hear them at the grocery store or they're just out right. in the ether or you you know if you're listening to a radio station or even a playlist somebody's going to throw that stuff in yeah. there all the time but Elvis, you know, even right. Frank Sinatra, you know, you'll hear Frank Sinatra stuff, mm-hmm. and he's still, yeah. for some reason, Elvis is yeah, in that yeah. weird, not cool sort of range for some reason, and and doesn't really have the outlet. Rock he's high. not on a rock, classic rock station. You know, yeah. you, you, yeah. you wouldn't be on an easy listening station mostly, I guess, you know? O- oldies yeah. radio stations yeah. just don't seem to exist anymore, unless they're AM, right. or you get on mm-hmm. the one on God. Sirius or something like that. As far as Sirius, terrestrial yeah. radio... 
Mm. Like when we yeah, were growing up, there, there was an oldie station. It was our classic rock today, you know. Yeah. It was oldie yeah. station. Yeah. That's what my dad listened to. But that you don't hear that anymore. So yeah. right, right. And the Beatles have gained fans every year since sure. they broke yeah. up. Every yeah, single yeah, year, absolutely. even today. So yeah, they will always be a collectible band. But I think just like Elvis, we will see a complete decline in kiss at some point in time too, because yeah, you know, time will tell for Yeah, absolutely. Right. right. It'll be Fascinate. interesting to see in, in 20 or 30 years will be the, the coin stuff. that's so precious to us be as collectible to somebody, you know, our age now, then, you know? Mm. Yeah. We've talked about that over and over again, that shrinking, very small targeted, purchasing base you know where it's basically us in an in like in like a 20 year age group you know there that there's nobody coming up behind us like they are for the beatles there's very right. few people mm-hmm. there's some but there's very few i mean there's not a onslaught of kids coming up behind us that's going to be wanting this stuff so you know at some point in time all of you guys with all that killer stuff is, if you want your money back you're gonna have to get out so, I mean, Joe. Joe, you must see see in your store like the people buying Beatles vinyl. They're not they're not all old, are they? There's oh, twenty five year olds. We, we sell Beatles records it. daily. You know, I can count on one hand how many Kiss records I've sold out of that store, and to young people, right. none. So I think right. that's a harbinger of what's to come for the whole collectibles mm-hmm. market in general. You know, the right. Beatles stuff right. is going to keep rolling because a kid who's buying it at twelve. 14, 15 now is going to look back at the Beatles as nostalgia for them when they're in their 40s and want to get some of that yeah, stuff that they yeah, had when they yeah. were. But the, sure. but the Kiss, yeah, kids, it's weird. Kids don't even really seem to know who Kiss is mostly, you know? I'd say right. you got 10, maybe 15 okay years left on Kiss because you think of people my age that are still interested in this. You know, the, the mid 40s, early to mid 40s guys. I'll be 45 this year. So, the, you know, 55, you still see some fifty mid-50s guys, you know, mm. collecting and buying Kiss. 60? Yeah. Yeah, you know, it gets you, a little out of probably, the wheel. You're yeah. probably done there. Yeah, you know, you're probably going to st- start mm. seeing some of those guys that are a little older than us start to dump some things because at some point in time you just go, you know, I'm 65 years old. What am I going to do with a bunch of Kiss puzzles, you know? <laughs> you know, so you could, you put fifteen years on me. Mm, it's, yeah. it's sixty years old, I, I, and I don't think there's very many behind me. So mm. There's not a lot of thirty-two yeah. year olds or twenty-nine year olds buying Kiss right. stuff right now. So I, I, mm, yeah. you probably don't have much time left to get your money back. Well, they may be really you, you're so <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> John just turns over and he's on eBay just making up yeah. the. Just making yeah, up the yeah, sale I'm posts. starting my, my, my store now. I better get to cracking. Yeah. I got a lot of crap to get rid of. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, right? <laughs> That's yeah. right. What did you start to say, Nicholas? No, you said it's being silly. Don't worry about it. It's all good. So <laughs> okay. do we want to talk about the, the five things if we had to yes, condense this yeah. down to a list? Whole, Should we whole do damn, it? The whole damn point mm. of the episode, right? So Let's, let's do it. <laughs> all right. So anyway, what I was saying when I – first pulled the list over here is it was interesting because we didn't usually we we cross a lot here and it's easy to make this list but Mm -hmm. we've got 15 20 different things on this list so i think the don ross cards we all had those right so those have to go on there somewhere yeah so we'll Mm -hmm. go we'll go with them uh so we have uh the alive 2 tour book the unboxed amigos uh, some kind of T-shirt, color forms, double platinum on vinyl, live two on vinyl, vintage, or any 2014 vinyl. Kiss Army Sponge, the Viewmasters, the Repro Lunchbox, the Robert Duncan book, any 70s mag, Music Life, Marvel Volume Two, Headliners book, and Hottest Brand book. Have fun. That, that's a yeah. It's it's <laughs> tough. I, I would say let's generically maybe put a T-shirt in there, like any type of you know okay. old school T-shirt. Mm. And I think any 
any affordable tour book in that range, I think, should go on the list yeah, probably, so. right? Yeah, yeah. So that's three things, not necessarily in that order, but I think three of those things sure. should be in there. And then can we just say magazine magazine generically, sure. and then that might include either the Music Life or the Kiss comic book or, mm-hmm. you know, any of that stuff. So Yeah, yeah. And vinyl. And vinyl. And vinyl. Mm. All right. Yeah, but that's... I think I, I think that's a great. I like even though we haven't got specific, I think that's you know go out there with your money and buy a great vinyl that you like. You know, great buy a, a tour book that you like, buy a what? magazine, you know, buy you know all that kind of stuff is kind we, of we, it's a good we, starting point T-shirt. We could take Don Russ off and put poster. I think it's harder to find a hundred dollar poster than it is to you know you can easily you can almost yeah. damn near get series one and two for Dunross and have complete out of the wrapper okay. sets of, yeah. of those two and, right and it's bubblegum cards and it's you know, that, that's all right we'll keep Don Ross in there so let's let's keep right. it was the first thing for for a couple of us I'm just kind of yes. for nostalgia purposes I'm, I'm pretty stuck on that I guess yep I okay. agree I agree all right. so the order now we have to pick the order so we have records magazines tour books. T-shirts and the Don Russ cards. What order? Wow! I think records <laughs> have to go first. Of course right? you do. You think first? Right? Of course, John does. Yeah, I, I think I think the records have but, to go first. I know Nicholas will fight us on it, but no, no, yeah, no, 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 no. I mean, I mean, in terms of a collecting vinyl thing, possibly not. But the the records also contain the music. So where would you start? Would be at the music. So I think they, the records should be number one. To, you know, for, for Joe, maybe it's more about actually the whole, the physical item. But I was, in terms of it containing the music, I, I think that should be first, like the number one thing. Well, and it's cool because right. a lot of those yeah. vintage, you know, you can even get even get a love gun with an unpunched gun and the whole thing for under a hundred bucks, and you sure. have like yeah. a really nice piece of collectible merchandise as well as a record, Correct. and you know, you get the whole the whole thing there, the it, whole kind yeah, of experience. That, that's the whole argument of why I never understood when we first started talking about it with Nicholas is why don't you collect the vinyl, especially the vintage stuff with all of that merchandise in it? Because it's, it's just stock chock full of merchandise. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. So, so um, it's about the music. So I get the music on Spotify. So it was the same delivery method. I do, do like vinyl, but for me, it's about the music. When I look, think of an album, I think about putting it on and playing it. So I'm I'm enjoying my right. vinyl at the moment, but it's it's for the music mainly, not the collecting of it. Yeah, mm. right. All right. So what do we want to do second? Do we want to do? For me, I think it would be the tour book, or a, really? a vintage tour book of some sort. I think vintage would be tour book. would be the thing because that's like a memento from the show. Yeah, I was mm. I was and I was going to say t shirt with the same idea sure. in mind. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I, I wouldn't quibble with that either. I mean, I think that's you know. All right, let's and say it can t- be any tour book. It can be it can be a tour book or a t shirt from the show you went to in in twenty twenty nineteen. I would say twenty twenty. Right, we all know that. You know, in terms of it can be it can be both something to collect from the past to give you a bit of nostalgia, or it could be a, a memento of a show you went to. I mean, yeah, like I, I think yeah, I've, I've still got a T-shirt from 1996 somewhere. You know, I don't wear it, but I can't throw that one away. The, uh, you know, live worldwide with the reunion, that was such a magical yeah. time. Like, it's yeah. it's a great T-shirt. So I, it's probably a crappily designed T-shirt, but it's it's what I bought when I went to see them in makeup for the first time in '96. And those All T-shirts, right. those concert T-shirts today, are creeping really close to a hundred bucks. <laughs> you know, Brand they're starting new. to get yeah. ex- more expensive yeah. and yeah. more Crazy. expensive. You know, mm. yep. Brand new. All right. So, how about this? Do we want to go in reverse order? Don Russ magazine, vintage magazine, or any magazine? Oh, tour probably, books, yeah. T-shirts, and vinyl. Good. I'd be happy with that. I'm good with yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, yeah. it became became a lot more generic than I thought it was going to. But yeah. Well, what can I, you do? But, what's interesting though, I think I we, we all talked about how hard this was or how hard we thought it was going to be. But think about if you say to somebody, you can basically almost buy any Kiss magazine for under a hundred bucks. Yes. There are a ton of T-shirts you can buy for under a hundred bucks. You know, there's what in any piece of vinyl, any record, really. You know, with mm-hmm. that are kind of in that more common range, easily under a hundred bucks. 
So I guess we kind of disproved our own theory that, oh, that's, it's tough for us because we're collectors and we're all like, ah, who wants that, that copy of Alive 2 with all the stuff in it? Because it's so common. But, you know, for a new collector, for under a hundred bucks, that's a pretty, pretty badass piece of merchandise to have, you know? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. All Mm. right. So that's our list. That's the list. You want to run it down one more time from five to one? Don Russ. Trading cards, Series 1, maybe you can get Series 2 at, at the same time. At number 5, number 4, we have any cool magazine, like a Music Life or any of the old circus magazines or the Kiss specials from the 70s. Uh, number 3, tour books, you're going to be a little bit more... What's the word I'm looking for? You, you, there's a lot of those tour books from the 70s you can't get for $100 or less. But, you know, you right. might be able to find a... Give me any tour book. A, yeah. a dynasty. It could yeah. be any tour book, but you know, yeah. mm-hmm. a dynasty or a seventy-seven, seventy-eight tour book. Certainly, any most of yeah. the '80s tour books and the tour books of the new ones that you go to. Yep. And yep. then uh, number where was I? Tour books number three, number two, t-shirts. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then we'll go number one with vinyl. So yeah. any any cool mm-hmm. record with cool inserts in it. So. Yep. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And there's our top five items. Either vintage under, or new. Yep. Mm. Top five items under $100 for the beginning collector. There you go. All right. Well, that's the list, right? Cool stuff from John. A beginner's guide. There you go. What else do you need? What more can you ask for? Yeah. <laughs> what more can you ask for? That's right. So, that's right. Well, if that's it, everybody, John, thanks for joining us again. Guys. Yeah. We, we love, love having you on the show. We love having you, you show off your amazing kiss ever ever expanding kiss collection it's amazing stuff and we looked at you we look forward to having you back on again with a whole another set of new co-hosts because every time you come back there's different people on the show so we'll all be gone hey, Jason, you go, where'd they go to That's right. <laughs> always something man always something yeah, you guys thank you for doing this i love watching the shows i love following the pages it's being a kiss fan and collector i, I really it's a you know a joy, and I appreciate it. Thank you for all you, everything you guys do. I appreciate it. Oh, Thank you. You're you're too kind, man. You're too kind. We, you know, it's just something something fun to do to pass the time. It's I all Jason's talk about. fault. It's all my fault. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, man. Cool. Thanks again. Thanks, Thanks John. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. We will see you. We'll see Bye. you on the next one. Bye. Hi, everybody. It's Gene Simmons, and you're not. This is uh, Kiss My Collectibles Podcast. It's weird that like my, my, my earphones only last like it must be a certain time every time. It like gets to about getting closer to the two hour mark and they just go doop, 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 and just die yeah. after that. Yeah. If you tuned it up. <laughs> Yeah, tune it up. Watch it. Watch a string break right on. I've tried to tune this thing up. I can get two strings on it tuned, and that's about it. <laughs> <laughs>